Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart. I'm here today with Sonia Brooks Fulmer, who is in the Chemical and Physical Biology Department when she was a grad student. You're back to tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Um, so welcome back. Thank you. Tell me about what you did when you were here at Vanderbilt as a grad student. I was in Brent Eichmann's lab, um, so he was in biological sciences, but my program was chemical and physical biology. Okay. And I worked on DNA repair proteins. We did biochemistry and structural biology of DNA repair mechanisms. Okay, so what happened after that? After that, I applied and was awarded the um, American Institute for Medical and Biological Engineering, or AIMB, scholar okay. position, which is a position where they place recent biomedical engineers mostly, although I wasn't, but biochemistry kind of was close enough um, in the Office of the Center Director at the Center for Devices and Radiological Health at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Okay. So <laughs> um, that's kind of a mouthful, but essentially it's similar to the AAAS fellowships that you may have heard of where they place um, PhDs into positions on Capitol Hill, but in this case it's in the executive branch of which is FDA. So Tell me about your role. Is it a finite amount of time that you're in this in this position? Yeah, the program is a nine to 12 month sort of fellowship. Okay. And then after that, you would apply for p other jobs. And I was able to um, continue on in the role that I was at at CDRH, with the Center for Devices. Okay. Um, so I ended up joining the team of one of my mentors there okay. and um, eventually kind of moved around a little bit. And now I'm in the Office of Policy still within the Center for Devices, but now instead of doing um, more regulations-focused work, I do guidance-focused work, which is different, although it may not seem so from the outside. Um, regulations are like binding things that industry and other people have to follow, whereas guidance documents are non-binding descriptions of our policy and our current thinking. It kind of interprets what the regulations and what the laws mean for medical devices. Okay. So if you had like a pie chart of what you do all day, yeah. what, would, what would be the, the pieces? So a lot of it is writing and meetings. I'd say maybe 50% of my time is writing okay. and maybe like 40% of my time is meetings and like 10% is like whatever else happens. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of um, consensus building during those meetings. So, you know, uh, we have to come to an agreement on what the policy should be. And then a lot of times we go away from those meetings and write it down and make sure everybody agrees with what we've written down. So that's a lot of what my day is. Okay. Um, how is this a good fit for you personally with your skills? Um, what, what, what are the good skills that you need to have that would make you a good fit for that job? Consensus building is a good one. So that means being able to communicate your position well, okay. um, being able to write and be clear about the thoughts that you want to everybody to know about is really important. Critical thinking, you know, something that I learned while I was here is translatable to this job too, because we have to problem solve and figure out how what we want to get done can work within like the laws and everything, so. What are some of the skills that you learned at Vanderbilt that make you a great fit for this job that can you know, help you in your job now? So I did some like science communication stuff while I was here, and I also did an internship while I was here, which okay. was with Life Science Tennessee. It was a legislative policy internship. Mm -hmm. And so being able to demonstrate that I was able to um, have a commitment to and be interested in policy work was really important, and being able to explain what I do in science was really important so that other people can understand it as well, not just other scientists. So okay. I think those were two of the, the biggest things that I did here. Okay, so if you, what are some of the skills that you had to gain after you started the job that you didn't get at Vanderbilt? Yeah, while I was here, I had no idea about the role of like regulatory policy. When I was working on the Students for Science Policy program here, I we talked about state policy and federal policy, and we talked about like Supreme Court law and things like that. But we never talked about regulatory policy, which I didn't realize was a thing. And so there's this whole world of laws about governing the regulation of, um, medical devices and drugs and things like that that I hadn't had any exposure to. So it was, that's one of the things that I really had to get up to speed on. Okay. So if there's a graduate student or postdoc that's interested in doing what you do now, what would you recommend that they do? I'd recommend that they demonstrate that they have this interest and they need to talk to people and tell them that they want to do it. And those people, the more people they tell about it, the more people will know about positions that can fit those types of interests. Right. Um, and then get involved in things like the policy internship as much as you can, or like do an internship with a company or um, do a science communication project where you're explaining your science to other people. 
just having that on your resume and being able to show that you're very interested in it is better than just saying you're interested in it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gathering that you think networking is good. I do, okay. but I don't think I'm like that great of a networker. What do you do? <laughs> I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one networker. Okay. I um, like to reach out to people that I've met through certain things and, and figure out, hmm, I like to reach out to them and understand what I need to do to get my next step and just let them know what I'm interested in. I'm not very good at like asking for things, but maybe I should be more. Um, <laughs> it's networking is difficult, but um, definitely valuable. Okay, so talk about the US FDA. Mm -hmm. What is it like working there? You're working for a government entity. Mm -hmm. What is that like compared to maybe academia? Uh, compared to academia, you know, in academia, I feel like you have a little bit more freedom in terms of what you're interested in potentially. Mm -hmm. um, like, so if you were your own PI in a lab, like, you would get to choose what you want to work on. Whereas in the government, there are priorities that are set by the center level, the FDA level, and the department level, which is the Department of Health and Human Services, and then even the White House. And so there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of public input also, which is different than if you were in academia working in your own lab. Mm -hmm. Although it's important to explain why the lab work you're doing is a benefit to everybody else in the government sector. Like we put all of our stuff out for public comment. So I write a policy document or review a policy document and then somebody else will comment on it. We put it out for everybody to comment on it. And then we have to incorporate those comments in. And it's a lot more responsive to the general public than it would be just in your own lab where you have, you know, reviewer two that's making you change something, right? <laughs> OK, so um, work-life balance, working for a government entity, what's that like? I think it varies a lot, um, you know, and even within my day to day. So some days, some weeks, it'll be just a 40 hour week. And then other weeks, there'll be some deadlines that I need to meet and it'll be more like 60 hours. And it, it just depends. It's kind of like it was here for me as a graduate student. Like when I had a lot of work to do, I came in late and did it all. Um, it's the same in the government. OK. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you wish you knew at Vanderbilt that you didn't, that you know now, that you'd want to share? It's more of what I said earlier that you should tell people what you want to do. So my the AMB scholarship I wouldn't have known about if Bruce Damon, a professor here, hadn't told me about it. And he only knew to tell me about it because I told him I was interested in science policy. And so it's one of those things where if people don't know that you're interested in something, they can't help you get to where you need to be. Right. So you know, if there are other graduate students that told me they're interested in working for the FDA, I'd be able to help them. But if they never told me that, I can't help them. So how did you know? Like, what are some of the things that helped you explore your careers that, you know, uh, possible careers that then you said, okay, this is the one that I wanted? Like, what were some of the strategies that got you to that sort of secure place of knowing mm -hmm. what you wanted to do? Yeah, so I think it's difficult. I, I say this in retrospect, like, tell me what you want to do, but it's sure. hard to define it when you're in graduate school and you've been, like, so immersed in, like, your research for so long. Like, it's easy enough to say, like, let me just keep doing research. But sometimes you do need to step back and think, figure out what you want for your life. And um, one of the things that made me want to kind of divert myself from the academic life is I was looking at how difficult it could be to get grants and how much there wasn't funding at the time for a lot of things that people wanted to do. And so I started getting more interested in how those policy decisions are made for funding you know, the NIH or NSF. And so I started looking into different science policy stuff and started the Students for Science Policy program. And there's so much more out there. And that's why I kind of went along this path. And once I did their internship and got more experience in the day to day of it and, you know, interacted with legislators and things like that, I realized that it was something I wanted to do. So it's more than just getting it on your resume, but also trying it out and making sure you want to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, jumping in. That's awesome. So. Um, one other question about, you know, your role now, I know that you're sort of in a, a training postdoctoral position, but do you think people who are looking to do guidance in that um, role need a postdoc to pursue? Like, what about some of your colleagues? How has that shaped out? I don't think you need a postdoc to do it. Um, the fellowship that I came through that I'm now a permanent employee of, mm -hmm. um, it only requires a PhD. Okay. I think it'd be beneficial. It could be beneficial to have a PhD as well because you get more expertise in either like a different field okay. or more expertise in within your own field. And so having that either depth or breadth of knowledge is always useful as well. Yeah. So okay, good. Thank you for coming. Thanks for your time. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah.